Are you one of those people who loves to order clams out at restaurants, but would never think of making them at home? Well, today I'm going to demystify clams, or a clam 101 for you, so that you know how to buy clams and you know how to prepare clams. In front of me, I have two different groups of clams. I have hard shell clams here and soft shell clams. I'm gonna start with hard shell clams because I think most people are more familiar with this group here. Now, going from small to large, I have this little guy here. These are cockles. They have a very detailed shell. You can see the ridges and ripples of the shell. And also, they tend to have this signature green color to one side and a brown color to the other side. They're typically sold 18 to 20 per pound. These are manila clams here, also another small clam. Manila clams come 25 to about 35 per pound, and then there are a medium-sized manila clam that's about 18 to 25. Four. Now, when we leave these behind, we enter into a family called cohogs. Now, cohogs are the little necks that we all know and love. So these guys here, these are little necks. Little necks are about 10 to 12 per pound. As we go up in size with middle necks, the number per pound goes down. So this is 8 to 10 per pound. These are top neck clams, and you get about 5 to 7 per pound and then we jump up to the big guys and these are chowders and you get about two to three of these per pound. Now little necks are really great eating them raw on the half shell. Once you go up in size the clam gets a little tougher so I would recommend that you use them in chowders if you're going to make baked clams, if you're going to fry clams. That's where I would go with these. The small guys over here these are great if you toss them in with pasta with linguine. Really wonderful there. Now, soft shell clams are really interesting because unlike their cousins here, which stay closed, soft shell clams actually stay open. And they stay open because the siphon or neck is always sticking out of the shell. The largest example I have here is this giant. And you probably are wondering, what the heck is this? This is called a gooey duck. And it is a member of the soft shell clam family. They're found in the Pacific Northwest. And the shells are usually six inches in length. But this siphon, or neck, can actually grow up to two feet. Isn't that crazy? And it usually extends outside of the shell. Now, gooey duck is great. You can chop it up and toss it into pots. A lot of people use it in sashimi or sushi. It's really interesting. If you find it, pick it up, try it, give it a go. You never know. A relative of the gooey duck is the razor clam here, another soft shell clam. This is very popular now in the restaurants. A lot of people make ceviche with razor clams. And then, of course, steamers. Steamers are very popular up in New England. They're typically steamed, as the name suggests and served with a little bit of butter. They can also be used in chowders. Now with all clams, you wanna make sure when you buy them at your fishmonger that they smell fresh and sea-like. You don't want anything that smells fishy. When you bring them home, you need to clean them. And clams, they all live in the sand. They live in the dirt, so they get a little gritty. So when you come home, what you need to do is you need to use a stiff bristled brush and really scrub the clams. Get all of that sand and dirt, and you can see it's already accumulating in the water. Brush them really hard to clean any of the sand out of the nooks and crannies along the shell here. So once you give it a good scrub, a good way to get any sand or silt out from inside the shell where the meat is, is to give the clams a quick soak. Now, you can do this for about two hours. Use a bowl of cold water and add a good amount of salt. So what you're doing is you're kind of simulating seawater. And if these clams sit for about two hours, you'll see that a lot of the silt and sand inside get purged out of the shell and it will accumulate on the bottom. So I'm gonna keep scrubbing these. I'm gonna put these in the refrigerator and I'm gonna show you what that looks like, all of the sand that actually comes out. So my clams, they've been sitting in the refrigerator for about two hours and you can see that a lot of the silt and grit has been purged from the shell. Now you want to remove the clams. For longer term storage, you want to transfer them to ice. What I like to do is use a colander over a bowl and so any of the melting ice, all of that liquid gets kind of pooled down into the bottom of the bowl. You don't want to keep clams in water long term because these are, you know, living, breathing 
creatures and they need some air. So make sure that there's air, that they're really cold, and clams like this should stay for a few days in the refrigerator, depending on how fresh they are. So there you go, tips and tricks for clams. I encourage you to shop your market. Enjoy, guys. <laughs>